thanks for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts on Afghanistan. I will also like to talk about um, the Taliban, uh, how they have come to power. Uh, I will also uh, talk about uh, the regional countries, uh, the impact it may have. And also, I would like to talk about the international community with a focus on the West, uh, because um, the United States uh, and uh, its uh, Western allies, European allies, uh, will, will have to play or not play a role uh, in shaping uh, the future of Afghanistan. Uh, as a way of introduction, I would uh, like to say that um, that a lot is being uh, uh, written uh, and has been written uh, and is being talked about um, uh, in the U.S. media as well as uh, the U.S. Uh, think tanks and has been uh, for the last 10, 15 years about two things. One is that... Um, was it uh, necessary to uh, to invade Afghanistan and remove Taliban from power? Or uh, could there be other means uh, available to apprehend the perpetrators of 9-11 um, tragedy and bring them to justice? Uh, th this, th this point uh, will always be depended whether war was uh, the lost um, uh, choice a matter of last resort and uh, and 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 whether other options uh, had uh, been fully uh, exhausted before the united states uh, uh, some say in uh, in a mode of revenge and and uh, red in the face and 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 also um, you know provoked by the kind of humiliation and, and loss of life uh, it suffered as a result of that tragedy of 9-11. So could that be avoided? That is, that, that is a point that needs to be, uh, will be discussed, has been discussed. Uh, the second point is, which is being discussed, uh, a number of books, good books and uh, had, have come out. Uh, Carter's is one of those, American War in Afghanistan. Uh, is that uh, that uh, how did the war progress? Uh, what was the strategy? And uh, what was the, the transcript uh, uh, for, uh, for nation building, state building? Uh, how was the political security order uh, being uh, I'm sorry, Nandini, I'm not putting it in. Man, I think I know Nandini, you are most finding it a bit, a bit difficult Excuse to... Me, I think somebody has um, to, has to uh, turn off the mic. So, you know, there's a lot of discussion on that. You know, this is unfortunate that, um, that uh, about two trillions, uh, which is estimated amount that has been spent of American taxpayers, uh, uh, 2,400 American servicemen have um, died in Afghanistan, have been killed. And, um, and the overall uh, casualties uh, of uh, the coalition forces is in between 7,000 and 8,000 uh, soldiers. And the loss of Afghan civilians, the collateral damage and, and the Taliban fighters runs into tens of thousands. We don't know the real estimate we don't know what really happened. And the tortures and uh, the prisons and the Guantanamo Bay. It, it is a very, very tragic story for the Afghan. There were two kinds of Afghans I, I see, uh, two type of um, uh, conditions that prevailed in Afghanistan. One was the cities, Kabul, Hirat, uh, Kandahar, Jalalabad, uh, mazar -e sharif and some other provincial cities where the um, uh, United States and Western countries devoted a lot of energy and resources to develop. And of course, uh, there was electricity, uh, there, was, there were medical facilities, there were uh, educational opportunities for youth. And 20, 000, 20 years is a very long period 
I, I am sure and, and I think it is true that a significant population of Afghanistan has benefited from reconstruction programs in Afghanistan. Infrastructure was uh, restored. And of course, the United States devoted its attention to building state institutions, state infrastructure, starting with uh, the Bonn Conference, the Constitution, the elections, and, and of course, uh, uh, the police, the military, the intelligence, everything and anything that had been destroyed during the, the Afghan Soviet war and also during uh, the inter Mujahideen conflict. And then between the Taliban and the Mujahideen uh, groups uh, that resulted into coming to power of Afghanistan, uh, to our Taliban, a lot of rebuilding uh, did take place in Afghanistan. But two things uh, which really led to failure was that that United States of America stayed too long. 20 years is a very long war. And I think there were true and honest assessments uh, and they were not um, uh, uh, given attention to that, uh, uh, there, uh, you know, uh, that nation building and state building could be left better to the Afghans and Afghans should have uh, stood on their own feet. Uh, the, it kind of uh, not only financial administrative, but also in terms of security, too much dependencies were created and they were very vulnerable. There was other side of Afghans. I think the rural, particularly the Pashtun countryside. Uh, from 2005, a couple of years, uh, a year after the United States um, uh, declared a sort of a victory in Afghanistan and went to invade uh, Iraq and uh, and created sort of another, uh, take another project of after removing Saddam Hussein. I traveled during those years, those, 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 um, uh, those times from, from Dralabad to, and at that time from Dralabad to Kabul, there was no road at all. It was through a storm of dust. And then staying in Kabul and then traveling to Ghazni and Kandahar and through that, uh, through Kandahar to to Quetta and back to Pakistan. Um, I, I could see, uh, I, I, I spent some time in Kandahar during that time. Uh, I could see uh, the emergence of Taliban and I could see the presence of Taliban and their narratives uh, in, in, in the Pashtun countryside. Um, but actually, you know, this is a misunderstanding of Pashtun society and Pashtun culture that uh, that how many of the Pashtuns in this area, in the government, in the security forces, and the Taliban were collaborating among themselves and to the advantage of one another. Uh, there was a lot of money to be made on, um, on the transport of goods that were traveling uh, either through Torham from Pakistani side or from Chaman from Pakistani side. And then there was, of course, uh, the opium production and the narcotics and, and and there were many other things. The estimates now are that Taliban by themselves were generating about $1.3 billion by indirect by taxation uh, on different things uh, and narcotics and smuggling and so many other things. But they were sustaining, they were able to sustain their war and and, and that, that, that the country said this time around it was just not only the Pashtun areas, but also they were able to penetrate into the north, to the west, to the east, almost in every part of, of, um, uh, of Afghanistan. One thing that Americans were concerned all the time that was corruption and mismanagement, but then Americans were not able to take any action. And we see an alienation between the security forces fighting on the front against the Taliban and, and the generals, right? And, 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 and the governments that were uh, sitting and, uh, and, and ma making money, and government officials in Kabul. So, so at the end, when it came to really killing or to be killed, and the American president, unfortunately, was uh, egging the Afghan military and the Afghans, no, it is time for you to fight. We gave you the weapons. We gave you the training. What are you doing? You fight, fight, fight. When they were being urged to fight, they were actually uh, making arrangements, uh, negotiations. 
through the elders, through the local community influentials, and surrendering and going home. They were not willing to shed their blood for Ashraf Ghani, who was an imported figure from, from World Bank and from American academia, and uh, put there to, to rule Afghanistan. Uh, so all these conditions have turned Afghanistan back to where we found it on three, four occasions. I remember 1992, when the, when the communist government collapsed, we were in the same situation. We were not, you know, we were thinking about the future government, the future of Afghanistan, and which way the Afghan state would go. The second time was when the Taliban took over in 1996, right? And before that, when after the Peshawar Accords, the Taliban uh, Mujahideen uh, formed a government, and immediately after forming the government and signing the accord in Peshawar, they began fighting among themselves. And most of Kabul was destroyed during that time. And we didn't know which way Afghanistan was going to go. Third time was when the Taliban took over. And then a kind of a civil war between the Northern Alliance and the Taliban. Third time, we see when the Americans uh, started bombarding Afghanistan, a big war, all kinds of weapons, big armies, and Taliban, uh, like guerrillas, they beat us and they mixed back to the population. They waited for their time. And, and, and when the time came, they stuck back. Fourth time during past five years or so, we are back to square one. And we are talking about the same thing, which with the Taliban are going to do, right? But now, one thing, when I, mean, I come to the Taliban now, one thing the Taliban have to realize, and if they don't realize, there will be big trouble for them and for Afghanistan that 20 years investment by the international community, not only the United States, European Union, and, and, and many other countries, and also international agencies, United Nations, they have invested too heavily in Afghanistan. Afghanistan, at least in urban areas, has changed. It's very different. It is, it is youthful population, relatively more educated, and, and of course, uh, they're concerned about their future. Right? And they're concerned about the future of their country. They are concerned about their economy, right? So there is a media, there, there's new technologies, so many things that I think they're very important. The, the big question today is that whether or not Taliban will uh, be sensitive to the international norms, something that, that the ideological regimes in the past, and this can be one of those revolutionary radical or ideological regimes have ignored and suffered heavily is uh, the imperatives of international system. Remember, China could not uh, take its seat in the Security Council of the United Nations for, uh, for 22 years, right? So it was negotiated much later. You have to accept the norms and and I believe that, that this is a very optimistic view of the Taliban, that they have been interacting with the leaders of the world community, conducting business directly with the United States. And now the pronouncements that they are making, they perhaps understand how important is this uh, recognition and legitimacy. Two things, right? Legitimacy and recognition. Legitimacy will come through what they do within Afghanistan. A recognition will come whether or not they accept international norms. They are under the radar. They are being watched. And probably there is much sharper focus on what they do or what they don't do. But again, their ability to deliver also depends. What is the response of the regional countries? What is the response of the international community? Right? But before I go to the regional countries and a little bit about the international community. One thing which I want to say with certainty is that um, Taliban will remain Taliban. Taliban will establish an Islamic state of Emirate. They are not going to compromise on the fundamentals of their ideologies that has shaped their struggle for the last 40 years or so. And, and Sharia or Islamic law is going to be implemented, right? So they're going to do all these things. 
and 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 the template that seems to be emerging of their government is more or less likely to be on the pattern of Iranian Islamic revolution regime that has been. And they, one thing that if anybody is expecting Taliban to be a liberal democrat, that is not going to be the case. They are going to be Taliban. They are going to establish Islamic government. And I, I think already a system of shura that exists in, um, in, in Iran, that is what they are going to implement. The question is that in this form, will that be acceptable to international community and our international community is going to, going to react to that. I come to the regional country. Yeah, yeah. I think among the regional yeah. so, Rais, can you sum up, sum up within two minutes? Okay, for the regional countries, I think, uh, uh, particularly India and Pakistan, have stakes in um, in Afghanistan. Uh, for Pakistan, uh, during past uh, 15, 20 years, we have fought um, the longest uh, insurgency, and 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 the insurgents uh, were based in Afghanistan. We kept talking to Afghanistan for a very long time, and I think they had the patronage of. Um, uh, 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 of some of the neighboring countries. And, and always uh, the refrain in Kabul was that they don't control all those areas. So we are concerned about what happens in Afghanistan. So here is an opportunity for India, Pakistan, and all re regional countries. Here is an opportunity to, for all to rebuild, reconstruct a peaceful united Afghanistan because all of us will benefit from it. And if Afghanistan remains in limbo, in a condition of statelessness, it will create worse than before security effects for Pakistan and all other countries. For the international community, it, the, the question is that that um, that that whether they like Afghanistan to stay as a failed state, or whether they like to integrate it or isolate it. Isolation will make Afghanistan a failed state, and a failed state we have seen not only in Afghanistan, but elsewhere. If that is the project, failing the states, destroying the states, and we have seen destruction of very stable states in Iraq, Libya, Syria, Yemen. This all happened after 9-11, and of course, Afghanistan. So I wonder if anybody would be interested in constructing Afghanistan and particularly helping its people or uh, simply keeping it uh, uh, barely alive by supporting the people of Afghanistan through international agency. But again, again, I think the, the condition is at least the Taliban in Afghanistan accept international norms. If they don't, probably then then the choices of international community will also be very limited. So I think I have all these questions. I don't have perfect answers. It is evolving situation. It is. Um, unprecedented the way a state has collapsed. A great power with its allies has uh, departed from the scene. scene. So it, it, it all creates uh, uh, conditions for instability, disorder in us, as well as um, a threat in all directions, as well as it can be an opportunity to meet, rebuild, and reconstruct Afghanistan. Thank you very much.